Hi, I'm Ann Vravik, the Program Director for Food Science at Mount Mary University. Today we're going to talk about gluten. Alright, so I have here with me Trisha and Cynthia. They're going to help us out in studying gluten. So ladies, what do you know about gluten? Gluten helps the bread to rise. It does help the bread to rise. It's also something that people have trouble with, right? Have you heard of a couple of issues with people with gluten sensitivity and allergies to gluten? Yes. So some people have to bake without gluten. And there are differences then in how breads rise, how various muffins rise, or whatever recipe you're using, because of the difference in the gluten content. Well, gluten is just a protein. That's all it is. Proteins are very long chains of polymers, repeating units of what we call amino acids. The polymers act much like a netting. And if you get these proteins wet, like we do when making a dough, those protein polymers, the long chains, will tangle together and form a web. And the web is tight enough that it starts to act pretty much like a latex balloon. That latex balloon is what captures then the carbon dioxide that forms when yeast produces its gas as it goes through fermentation. As the gas increases in volume, the protein of the gluten forms a circle or a ball, a sphere around it and captures that carbon dioxide. That's why you see all the bubbles inside of bread when you slice it open. What's surrounding the carbon dioxide is the protein gluten. So we have here four different flours. This one is a bread flour. Here is an all-purpose flour, a whole wheat pastry flour, and a gluten-free flour. I also have here a scale. This is just a normal kitchen scale, but you can also use just a measuring cup, just so long as you have the same amount of flour for each different experiment. I have four bowls, a spoon to help us in scooping. I have a cooking baking sheet and again, a volumetric flask. And again, you can use just a cup of water if you don't have a volumetric flask. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna measure out 150 grams of any one of the flours you'd like to have go first. Great, so we have our four different flours here. Now we're going to add 100 milliliters of warm water. So as you think about recipes, one of the things that's so cool about science, particularly in food science, is that we have such an experience with food already that a lot of times we can predict very well what's going to happen. The question is the why. So what can you imagine in terms of if you were making a loaf of bread or you were making a pie crust? Which one do you want to rise the most? The bread flour. Bread, right? Pastry wouldn't be good if you had a pie crust that had big bumps in it or, or holes in it. So this is gonna be a less rise. Because this is a high rising flour, would you expect, knowing that we want to encapsulate and capture carbon dioxide, would you expect bread flour or pastry flour to have more gluten? Bread flour. Bread flour. Yeah, bread flour, exactly, because we want it to be big and fluffy. All-purpose flour is somewhere in between. We use this for all sorts of different kinds of recipes, whether it's biscuits or cookies or pancakes, all with different variations of rise in them. So this one will be somewhere in between. And then we know, of course, this being gluten-free, right? You won't get any of the uh, gluten when we try to separate it from the dough. 
So next we're going to knead the dough for 10 minutes. So the reason why we need to do this is because the gluten, although it is present in the flour at this point, the fibers or the if you fibers, if you will, the polymers have not yet lined up in the right direction. Right now they're all kind of in a mess. What we're going to try to do is knead the dough to line the uh, protein uh, polymers in the same direction. That way you get the best rise in any particular kind of dough. So we want to call, do what we call develop the gluten. So our scientists here are going to take a dough ball and they're just going to knead the ball. When you're doing that, the surface might get a little sticky, so be sure to use the same flour of which you made your gluten ball with. Sprinkle it down and go ahead and grab a ball and just put your palm into it what we're going to do is you take your ball and you roll it back on itself and push it forward, okay? And that is aligning our gluten strands in the same direction, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, great job scientists. We're now going to rinse out all of the components to the dough other than the gluten. So as they rinse it under a stream of water about the size of a pencil, stay with cool water and just keep again kneading the dough under the water until everything is gone. And when the water starts to run clear, you know you're done. We're gonna expect, of course, as we said before, that this will have the most gluten left. This one may just disappear. We don't know. We'll test it and see what happens. Okay, nice job. So what happened to this one? It disappeared. <gasps> it disappeared, <laughs> yeah. And we expected that, right? Yes. Because there is no gluten in gluten-free flour. That's the point. So these, however, you can see that we've got a bit of a different size going on here, which is the most? The bread most flour. Gluten. Yeah, bread yes. flour, and that's what we predicted, right? So go ahead and pick up a ball and just stretch it for us and show us what that protein looks like. So all that's left here in the dough are the protein strands that have lined up just nicely. And that is gluten. It acts like a latex balloon as it captures the gases for us in a bread. So just go ahead and knead it, pull it, line it up. You can grab one as well and play with it a little bit. It's kind of fun to play with gluten balls. The more you knead it and uh, play with it, it'll get smoother and smoother and those strands will become a real stretchy Play-Doh. As long as it stays damp, you can play with it for as long as you want. Wow. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yes. Okay, so that is gluten. It's just a long strand of protein that we use in food science to make sure that we get a good capturing of gases to make doughs rise.